One minute she was chained up, the next she was gone. Don't insult me, Shalim. Your weakness for women is well known. You let your guard down, and she just walked away. I will find her again, Grandmaster. I swear it. Do it quickly, before she leads the assassin directly to the Archive. Good day, Moral Gamers. We're going to take a look today at Assassin's Creed for the PlayStation Portable. This is Assassin's Creed Bloodline, which came out about the same time as Assassin's Creed 2. So, let's take a look. So what would happen if Assassin's Creed had come out for the PlayStation 2 instead of the PlayStation 3 and 360? Well, look at it this way. You'd have dithered graphics, you'd have emptier streets, and look at that. Everything is just a little bit more washed and a little bit more plain than it is in the later versions. That's because the PSP's power is essentially the same as the PlayStation 2, and the PlayStation 2 couldn't hold a candle to the modern gaming systems. Bloodline actually surprises me, though, because when you climb to the top of a viewpoint to get a view around, it actually gives you a 360 panoramic just like in the console versions. And this surprised me because I didn't expect them to put something like this into a portable system. Now, granted, yes, you can still jump into the hay off of each viewpoint, but that's not as cool because the hay just kind of sits there as a solid. You see what I mean right there. It, it, it's not as dynamic. Still, the 360 panoramas that they do is impressive for the PSP. The AI in this game is actually pretty dumb. Uh, it goes from, hey, walk up to me and kill me, to this guy here who, for some reason, just doesn't like the look I have and decides to try and attack me. I'm just walking by him, and all of a sudden, he starts striking me. So, however it is they uh, did this is a little odd, and it always sends you running for cover. Another issue I noticed with the computer is that it lacks the ability to jump. And this is actually kind of funny, because as you can see here, I'm just standing up there, and even though I've been spotted by everybody and their brother, nobody's able to do a darn thing about it. So I can stand up here indefinitely, and those enemies can never touch me. Nevertheless, the game allows you to do a fair amount of assassinations. Uh, your stealth kills are key in this game, and it, it, it's kind of funny because when I played Assassin's Creed, on PlayStation 3 and 360, you could do all sorts of really cool assassinations, like jumping off buildings and knifing them. In this one, you can't. In this one, it's just basically walk up, stab him in the gut or something like that, and then walk away. And that's the bulk of the kills that you'll find here. Uh, there are some where you can pull them off roofs, and it's still, it's still pretty tame. I don't think they had quite the power to put some more detailed and more intricate assassinations into this game. In addition to the main story quest, you do have the side missions like save the citizen, retrieve treasure, uh, different things like that. Um, these just serve to further distract, but they don't really actually build onto the story or do anything overall that would be worthwhile doing them. So if you just want to run through the game, just blitz through all the story quests and skip all the side stuff. At least once a chapter, you're going to have to fight a boss that furthers the story. And each boss has their own pattern of attack, but the problem here is is that you can pretty much beat every boss just by using your counter attack. Uh, so you'll sit there much of the time holding R and hitting square whenever you see them start to move. And countering in this game is so bloody easy, it's ridiculous. The enemies attack so slowly, uh, up until the witch here, who she's a little bit more difficult to tag, but still a uh, fairly easy battle. So gamers, are you ready to embark on the quest for the Apple of Eden? If so, hey, Assassin's Creed Bloodline is a good game. It attempts to bring everything from the mainstream Assassin's Creed to the portable PSP. And as this being its first portable outing, I'm strongly looking forward to a Vita version of Assassin's Creed. I think this is actually a great outing. The game has its issues here and there due to the PSP's limitation, but overall it is what I would consider to be a good game. From a morality standpoint, however, keep in mind that this is 
Assassin's Creed, not Apostle's Creed. So you are going to be killing a lot. And in, in the fact that you're killing, I mean, if you have issue with that, uh, you may want to skip this game. I mean, from a moral standpoint, uh, the fact that you are killing, in some ways, it actually makes killing look cool, may not quite be what you want. Uh, also, the history of this game is that it is the Christians versus the Muslims, and Altair is one of those ones trying to stop the Christian Crusades from sweeping through and ravaging uh, the Middle East. So, depending on where you're at morally, you may or may not like this particular game. <laughs> 